There's one universal truth that I seem to encounter time and time again. There's more than just one way to skin a cat. Now, don't be alarmed. You haven't stumbled across feline taxidermy YouTube. <laughs> Pretty sure there's a joke about cats getting shredded in there somewhere. Anyway, it's a metaphor. It could apply to making sandwiches. It could apply to political systems. It could apply to philosophical worldviews. The point is, often, there are many different approaches that could eventually lead to the same outcome. Now, the outcome I'm concerned with today in this video is getting huge and shredded. All right, maybe that's extreme. How about just getting in pretty good shape? So let me talk about two very different but equally legitimate approaches to making good, solid progress in the gym. Method one, robot mode. This approach will appeal more to those who like systems and processes, the more scientifically minded among us, those who like to view large tasks merely as their smaller component parts. It involves a methodical, emotionless approach to doing what has to be done in a very intentional yet matter of fact way. You wake up, go through the motions, commit necessary tasks to habit, and waste very little mental energy thinking about or dwelling on any of it because you have a deep underlying faith in the power of regimented, repetitive processes. Characteristics of this approach include, but are not limited to, training in silence or listening to calming music, podcasts, or audiobooks in the gym finding motivational videos, phrases, or people to be somewhat unbearable, not checking your pump after every single set, leaving the gym after a workout and then just carrying on with your life. Method two, the Rocky montage. This approach likely appeals to the more expressive, more emotion-driven individuals among us. Those who, whether through flaw or feature, feel like we need to be enthusiastic about something in order to actually do it. It involves passion, gravity and grandeur, where each task is emphasised to its utmost and approached as if it's life or death, do or die, now or never, triumph or tragedy. In this instance, you're not just a cyborg feeding every day into the algorithm, you are the protagonist in a valiant quest for optimal body composition. A task is not merely something to be ticked off a list, but a foe to be defeated. You view the whole thing as a story rather than a process. I'm going to war. Characteristics of this approach include, but are not limited to, Using words like sacrifice to describe a marginal reduction in dietary carbohydrates, buying pre-workouts that have words like rage, nitro, explode, or surge written on the tub, writing Instagram captions using we when really you mean I, building your entire personality around being on prep. Method three. Each approach has its merits. Each will appeal to people with different attributes and personality traits, but I don't think this is a case of choosing which to go with, but rather when each is appropriate. If you want to stick at something and make progress long-term, your best chance is robot mode as your default setting. This is how you coast along for the vast majority of the time in all those uneventful periods, of which there will be many, that don't really feel like much, but accumulate over very long time spans and eventually compound into some significant progress. So that's the default. Then you just sprinkle in the odd Rocky montage here and there when it's useful, necessary, or just when you're feeling inspired. Maybe that's when you first start out. Maybe it's in the lead up to a summer holiday, or maybe it's just every January when you try and bring your cholesterol levels back down into a non-life-threatening range. You can get hyped up, be irresponsible with caffeine for a bit, create a new playlist on Spotify, impulse buy some gym gear and attack it, at least for a while, before eventually you settle back into robot mode and just tick over until next time. 
The point is this, you can't go full Rocky montage mode 100% of the time. It's energy intensive, it's unsustainable, and although this might sound a bit strange, one day you'll get pretty bored of being dramatic about every workout. I'm going to war. Passion is great, but you've got to ration that passion. Think of your progress like this long, slow march, gradually moving closer to the goal with the occasional sprint chucked in. So to conclude this section of the video, I'd say the first key to making progress long-term is learning to pace yourself. Go with the ebb and flow of inspiration. When you're feeling into it, hit it hard. And for all of the other times, learn to go through the motions and do what you've got to do on autopilot with as little obstruction to the rest of your life as possible. Of course, to make progress with something long-term, you have to, as a prerequisite, actually do the thing long-term. So a few tips from me on that front. One, methods. The phrase trust the process is thrown around a lot, but that's predicated on the idea that the process is a good one. Whether it's in the gym or something else, there will be long periods where your progress is less obvious. Maybe you're going through a weight plateau when you're trying to get leaner, or you're deep into a gaining phase and you can't really see or measure much significant week to week change. In those instances, you do have to have some faith that your methods are good methods and that they will eventually get you there. So it's really just your responsibility to make sure that you're following a decent routine, you've got your nutrition worked out and you're allowing for enough recovery, etc., etc. Two, motivation. I think these days we define motivation as feeling like doing something. If we don't feel like going to the gym, we say we're not motivated to do so. But I don't think that's what motivation is. All motivation is really is a very basic personal judgment on whether or not something is worth doing. Is it worth brushing your teeth in the morning? Is it worth buying this thing? Is it worth watching this video? Is it worth going to the gym? These are all personal questions that you have to answer yourself. I'm not here to tell you what's worth it and what's not because there are different costs and different payoffs for everyone. But this idea that motivation is somehow linked to enthusiasm for something, I think that's just a consequence of a bullshit modern day self-improvement industry. Three, relativity. Progress, or at least fast progress, is relative. Not relative to other people per se, but relative to where along the journey you are. In many things you do, you will experience diminishing returns. Training is one such thing. Early on, you get healthier, you gain confidence, you get stronger, you look better, you become more disciplined. But eventually, years and years down the line, all those physical and psychological benefits are far less pronounced. And you have to put far more time and effort in for pretty minor returns. Now, you could find that disheartening, but since it's pretty much just how the world works, it just is. I think you'd be kind of unjustified to do so. What you really need is to refine your definition of progress. It's not gonna be the same 10 years down the line as it was at the very beginning. That is what's commonly known as fantasy. Really, diminishing returns is just the universe's way of weaning you off instant gratification so that one day you can, you know, do stuff like an adult. I hope that wasn't too demotivational. I kind of hope it was in a way uh, because I think demotivation is the new motivation. You know what I'm saying? That's abstract, but anyway, like me stuff, like me channel. That doesn't even make sense. I'm leaving. Jordy Lenny is my hero.